you. So let's just do that thing where we just keep quiet for a moment. Just breathe. And allow yourself for just one second to be. And together. Everybody. Shall we do that one more time? And that's right. Good afternoon. That was my conversation starter, which is just connect with yourself for a moment. And when I heard Lindsay speak and Nick and Winston, I kind of thought, I just might go home now. <laughs> uh, because it's all been nicely brought together. So today, I've called it the star or the wonder. A few people asked me earlier on what I do. Well, my name is Ben, and yes, I do, as you know, and I am particularly interested in how humans interact with themselves, their world, and technology, meaning digital technology, which we can see how fantastic it works sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my work involves literally going out to speak to people, get into their heads, understand how we can make technology work for them, with them, as opposed to just chucking things at them. And it would mean that I just enjoy observing people. I do that for a living. And guess what? I'm observing you right now. <laughs> and it's exciting. With all we've heard and how I feel right now, what if I say to you that at the end of this presentation and at the end of this event today, you will feel really happy, you feel a buzz, you feel awakened. Would that be because I'm awesome? <laughs> <laughs> or would that be because you're also awesome and you're here to gain something today? So I'll take you on a little journey and I'll tell you a story. Who likes gifts? Christmas gifts, birthday gifts? You're gonna to have to put up your hand now if you do. <laughs> Excellent, so I got a birthday, oh no, not a birthday gift, a Christmas gift. About 11.33 on Christmas day, let's see. Oh. I got that beautiful bundle of everything fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Who can guess his name? His name is not Ben, he's not Noel. <laughs> Who knows his name? We called him Baby Jesus. <laughs> And I can, I can tell you everything about him, but I won't because we're going to be here all day. <laughs> Two weeks before baby Jesus arrived, I got that present as well for him, which is a little rocker. And I, I looked at it, I wondered, hmm, there's all these little hanging, dangling bits on it. How long would it be before he got bored of them? And I really was keen to see how he would interact with these things. Then I particularly noticed something there, which maybe if this is working right there, is a star. That one. It has a, sm a smiley face on it as well, so I was interested to see how my son would, what my son would do with a star. So, we put Jesus in the little rocker, which has this massage functionality that he likes, and he would just sit there and gaze at the star. Literally gaze and observe it and wonder, what is this? So one of those days I was also observing him observing this star. And it just came in my head, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Let's do that together, go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Beautiful, thank you. So, there he is now. And I'll tell you everything he's doing with that star. So he used to wonder, just sit down, look at the star, wonder, and, uh, which is a bit like what our relationship with technology was. So pre-1990s and all that, when there was no form of feasibility, so to speak, technology was just a novelty. It would be literally shoved at you and you had to accept it. So uh, we had all those clunky, big, massive uh, TVs. It was all utility focused, wasn't it? It had to do something. And then, as baby Jesus grew, um, well, before this stage, 
he started, he could reach that star because he'd grown up a bit more before he couldn't reach it, but he just didn't touch it. So I would get the star, dang, uh, dangle it in front of him, dangle it in front of him, then he would play with it and interact with it, which is more like where we are today with technology, isn't it? Because now there is something called user-centered design, which is what I do. And I'm not going to tell you all the details about that because it's not a technical presentation, is it? However, because now people actually care about what the user wants to achieve with what they're doing. Could, could that app make life easier? Would the user enjoy using that app? Is it going to crash every two minutes? All sorts of things, you know. And then, wait for it, today, guess what he does with the star? He yanks it about, he just throws it around, tries to stick it in his mouth, and then sometimes he completely ignores the star and starts exploring other dangling bits around the rocker. And I thought, aha, that must be sort of what happens or the future we're going to see with um, uh, the technologies. So let's have it, take a little peek <coughs> at our, our future and um, explore that for a second. So come with me on this journey. We're no longer in 2018, it's 2025, okay? And um, Forbes puts it in quite a nice way, which we will talk about today. So let's say it's a Monday morning, you wake up, and your bathroom mirror has got all sorts of things displayed on it because your car is uh, taking you some health check of you and sent the data to your bathroom mirror to remind you, say, take that vitamin today and that one and that one. And that fridge, your smart fridge, knows that the, the, uh, the milk is, is gone. And it, not only did it let you know that the milk is gone, it's actually reordered it. <laughs> and we have a new milkman, <laughs> Joe, the robot. And guess who receives it? What shall we call him? Bob, the household robot that does all your house chores. So literally, you have nothing to do but just to be, right? So this is sort of our near future. And a lot of these things <coughs> exist today. Some are at a very high level of research, others are production ready and stuff like that. So we're talking about a future that is so connected and where things like this would happen, right? No more mobile phones because augmented reality lets you put it, just you project it there. You don't need to carry anything around. I mean, who would have thought that a telephone would fit into the pocket, right? Self-driving cars. Are there so not only would would your uh, fridge reorder things for you, but your car has downloaded updates automatically and charged wirelessly through the night. And when you're ready, it comes out for you because you don't need to drive it, right? It drives itself. And machines are more like humans. A man called Elon Musk. Ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So he's got his neural lace theory, which is all about brain computing, where you just need to think about it and it will happen. So sometime in future, we're going to be like cyborgs or something like that. Um, prosthetics will give us superpowers. Who's seen Black Panther, the movie? Right. Do you remember the villain that had a prosthetic hand and he was also a gun? Okay. Now, Imagine that with prosthetics, you can do literally anything because it's advanced technology. And of course, we've got uh, the drones which are being already tested doing deliveries. You can get bored of everyone here, jet off to Mars or some, uh, somewhere on a spaceship. And this is the near future we're looking at. Did you know that by 2050, there would be about 9.6 billion of us? which is a 30% increase from where we are today, from 7 billion to about 9.6 billion. Staggering. And we're going to be living much longer because medical advancement will ensure that. So um, I mean, my great-grandmother is not alive now. But I'm sure Jesus' children's children possibly might see me. Jesus being my son, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> By 2050, natural resources will deplete because 
there's so many of us. So maybe we're, we're not going to be eating normal food anymore. A little tablet will be all your calorie requirement for the day or whatever. I don't know, maybe, right? And by that time, things like computers will be so, it will be everywhere, just 100, 1,000 times faster and really cheap as well. And everything will be too connected. Because machines are becoming more like humans and we've got all these things going, maybe we'd have some humans that are not really fully humans. I don't know. <laughs> but one thing I know is that it is absolutely exciting, interesting, and an awakening to what or where the position of the user is going to be at this time. So we started from where it was. The technology was the wonder, and the user just wondered, so they gave you whatever. Who was very excited the very first time they got their very first mobile phones? Yeah, I'm getting some nuts here. And then we are where we are working hand in hand with technology. And we are going to where we will be the wonder. Because the technology would literally figure out what needs to happen, recreate itself, so it's no longer going to be utility-centered to user-centered, we're probably now moving to intelligence-centered or artificial intelligence-centered, where even we as humans already expect, I mean, have you put your postcode or something on a sat-nav and you just expected it to know exactly where you're going? And you got pissed off if it didn't take you there. <laughs> <laughs> right? And you shouted at me like, Arr! That's because we're edging slowly to that point, okay, where we expect the machine to work it out, and it will work it out at that point. Now, what happens to you, to me, to the humans? My son has had an awakening now that he can even ignore that star and focus on other things. He's discovering more. And there are, I mean, someone said that everything that can be created is already being created. So had Edison or Tesla or any of them had, um, I mean, had anyone else had what they had a thousand years before them, the electric bulb would have been created, would have been made. So in essence, they didn't really create anything because everything is, you just need to manifest it, so to speak. So would we start to harmonize better? Are we going to get more mindful? Are we going to seek more meaning? Are we going to kind of access different levels of consciousness? Are we going to just leave that technology bit and wonder about other things? Could that be where we're going? It's been said as well that people like um, Niels Bohr, who invented uh, the, well, found out what things were, uh, we have in the atom, he, he saw it in a dream. Mozart, I'm a classical musician, and I know how complex his, his works are. He actually had a full hour of symphony in his mind in a dream before he wrote a single note. We know about Plato, we know about Einstein, we know about many of them. And one of the common things uh, that unifies their experience and what we know about them is the fact that they seem to access something that we don't know about or that seem a bit strange or alien to a normal person. And I'm wondering, when technology is no longer a distraction, are we going to become Einstein's Mozart's of some sort? Lindsay said something earlier about um, the importance of teaching kids something else in school that is beyond just addition and subtraction and stuff like that. I also think that schools should start doing mindfulness, teaching students to just be quiet for a moment. What are we? We are human beings. We're not human doings. So we should at least get to the point where we really just be. So there is a duality concept for reality where it's said that we've got a 1% and 99%. And the 1% being the physical world we have here now. Some call it the dark world just because in this world you have the headaches, the migraines, the debts, the taxes, uh, the school run. You have all sorts, right? The deadlines almost always never meeting them. An illusion that keeps moving. And then there's the 99% where you have the peace, the love, the joy, the ecstasy, the beauty, the creativity, the inspiration, the intuition, all those things. 
who would like to be there? I surely would like to be there. <laughs> because what we see at the minute feels like a dream. So if you are in a dream, uh, you have this beautiful experience, you create everything, it's in details, you even have a physical body in the dream. You can go to a country you've never been to and see people and everything, but it's a dream. It's real only to you at that time. When you wake up, it goes. What if we're living a dream? What if the 99% was the reality? What if we could control what we do from another level? Different religions talk about it, give it different names. And I'm not all about names right now, I'm all about an experience. Because one day, the only thing that's going to matter is you. So would you give yourself an opportunity, a moment to just be? Acknowledge, as Nick said, that what is happening is happening. I'm in a dream. This is not me. Who are you? Remember this. You are consciousness in a state of being. An immortal spirit having a human experience. Because you never really die. One day the flesh will die. This, that thing about you, I mean, someone says to me, how do you know? And the, all I ask is, what causes the ear to hear? What causes the eyes to see? What causes your breath to rise and fall? Is that one thing called consciousness, that thing that makes you alive? And all you have to do sometimes is realize, I am not my experience. I am not my fears. I am not my hopes. I am not my pain. I am not my hurt, as Winston nicely pointed out. I just am. Because you're this beautiful perfection in a state of being. So shall we do that one more time? <sighs> Feel free to shut your eyes and just reach deep within and connect with the real you. The you that never dies. The you that can do everything. The you that is alive. Just be forgetting everything else this moment and breathe deeply. Just enjoy it. Life is a gift, life is beautiful, and we can really live it. Is it the star, or is it the wonder? You choose. So, I think that it would be a good point for us to just, together, go again. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, like we mean it now. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. We're going to do it one more time, but before then, just look around. And when you look around to people around you, just wonder what they are. Just look around for a second. <laughs> do you see how beautiful everyone suddenly seems? Because it is all really amazing. So, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Give yourself permission just to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.